Okay, so I am recording this early in the morning today because I've got a lot of events on. So I'm trying to get ahead of things just on this front for this week. I mean, I know I'm already behind in the blog post, but don't worry, that's shortly, that should be out by now. But uh, I knew it wasn't out yesterday, but don't worry. Uh, th this week's just been a little bit of a crazy week for me, Dals. So, you know, did, things didn't go exactly as planned. But it was a very good and productive week, so... I'll say that's that's a positive. Although I didn't get the blog post out, I got a lot of other things progressed from you know in multiple different domains. So very happy with that. But what are we going to talk about? No one really responded or talked about or commented or anything. So I'm just going to make my own decision as to what I'm going to do when it comes to this week's episode. Um, and it's going to be about the halo effect. So this is something covered um, quite extensively in the Thinking Fast and Slow book by the Daniel, whatever his name is, and essentially, the Halo Effect is about it's about first impression. It's it's the reason why you know people you know put a lot of emphasis on first impressions because it changes how people then think about you know your actions and. Yeah, and how they interpret, or even what you say and how they interpret it. So pretty much what it is, is like, a halo effect is where, where someone leaves a first, like a good first impression on you, you're much more likely, you know, to give them, like, later down the line, you're much likely to give them benefit of the doubt later, whether, you know, with whatever it is. And you're much more positive, like, re more much more likely to respond in a positive manner. Now, the danger about this is, that people understanding, you know, knowing that, right, can, you know, manipulate that by, you know, always trying to, like, but if, the, like, they know that first impressions are important, they'll do that to then make sure that, you know, you interpret things in the best light later, and they might not actually be what they're representing. Like, who knows, like, that, you know, don't get me wrong, first impressions can be truthful too, you know, first impressions could be, uh, um, can align with who they are as a person and who they are, like, when it comes to their character, but it's something that I think, based off the, the book and, you know, based off just, you know, generally, it's something that you shouldn't put too much weight on in your first kind of, well, you know, when you're judging a person and, you know, and to be aware that your first impression will, uh, somewhat color your future interpretations or your future judgments about that person because it can kind of become not not a spiral but like it can you know build upon itself where you kind of every single time you kind of look at things in the best light and it just kind of builds upon itself and it only gets to a point eventually where you know it really takes a moment where someone that person you know completely betrays your trust or you know betrays you in such a way that you can no longer hold that previous belief and judgment that they, they're a good or decent person. And, oops, time for some a little bit of dead air. I need to take a water, I take a sip of water. Mmm, mmm. Make a lot of noises so there's no dead air and so you're not bored. Mmm, 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 mm. Well, but now we're back. And what was I saying? So, yeah, it's something that I don't think you should put much weight on um, or at least be, if, like with a lot of these things, these are like cognitive, like, like, uh, there are co it's a cognitive bias of some sort, and, you know, you're never going to be fully inoculated or you cannot have full prevention or protection against, you know, these things. It just kind of plays off in your mind and your subconscious, but it's something that you can be aware of, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, your interactions with people. So I think a good example, two good examples could be a, one, a political figure, and the second could be, uh, let's say, you're interviewing for a job, like, you know, you're the interviewer and, you know, you're having an, uh, someone come in who wants, who's applied for the job and stuff like that. I think those are two really good situations where we can kind of look at it and kind of explain, you know, kind of explain things in, in this light of the halo effect. So with the politician, so imagine like, you know, that, you know, election an election's coming up. It's quite topical because I'm actually in the, mi the middle of an election campaign. So, you know, let's use that one. So let's say there is a, an election coming up and there's two main candidates, you know, from either party or whatever. And one of them's, you know, a kind of a, a newer person that you haven't really like seen or heard much about, 
you know, in the news, but you, let's say that you kind of, who knows, maybe they come to a community, like, you know, there's a community outreach event or, you know, a community forum or something, or maybe you just see them on the news on TV and, you know, they leave a good impression in your mind. They look the part, they act the part, they look sound and kind of feel like what you think a good politician should look like. And so you have this idea built in your mind that, oh, well, they must be a good politician because our mind's always looking for patterns. And that's kind of why the halo effect kind of exists. It's like it, it takes the first thing it sees, like, which is that good first impression, and then kind of extrapolates and thinks that you know, everything else is going to follow that similar kind of vein so that when you know, something comes up that seems to challenge that, you look at it, things in the best light because, well, you've got this like, mental mind map that says, no, 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 no their first impression leads down this path, which is, you know, good, good, good stuff. So, you know, obviously there must be a misunderstanding with that other stuff. So let's say, you know, you see that politician and you think, oh, you know, they, 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 re- they seem really good. They seem like a good person, right? And, you know, I, I trust them and I, I feel like I can, you know, vote for that kind of person. But then, you know, as the campaign goes along and as the election get, election day gets closer, you know, details come out about, you know, Maybe they did some shady business deals or did some corrupt stuff while in, in a lower position in government, um, you know, so, so on and so forth. Maybe they gave, you know, a certain financial grant while they were uh, to, you know, one of their mates or whatever, or, or who knows what it could be. But you'll t- typically not, but due to the halo effect, you won't actually see that for what that is, where it's like, hey, this behavior is kind of aligning with someone who is someone who's corrupt, but because you had that first impression, you, you're much less likely to get to that conclusion, you know, when, when that new evidence is brought forward and when that new, when these new revelations are made, you're much, you're much, much more likely to kind of take their side, even though you might have, you know, you might have somewhat questions about it. You'll still take their side or you'll still much be more likely to take their side because of the halo effect and, what it informs when you, because like I said, it's like, it's like a mental mind map. It's like, well, this thing isn't fully aligning with my map. So then instead of what the brain does, instead of like, you know, reconforming the mental mind map to fit the new information, what it typically tends to do, because it's lazy and it's easy to do this, is it either ignores information or it, you know, kind of contorts and backflips things or looks at things in a certain light that is the most favorable. So it doesn't have to change its belief system because as I've gone on said through countless videos throughout you know this channel is that changing someone's beliefs is an incredibly hard thing to do because you're te- essentially telling someone to change their reality and that's a hard thing you know like people want to operate in what you know to in their mind seems like reality and if you're saying you know no this is wrong and here's the evidence and you need to change your belief based off that you're essentially change, like you know, asking people to change their reality and they've built a life around and in that reality. So having to change that is difficult. Now you could say, well, changing your thoughts on a political figure, how much of a sh- like change of reality is that? Everyone thinks that, you know, well, a lot of people think that like all politicians are corrupt. And I think that's a, you know, a, a bit of a um, overgeneralization. Like, yeah, there definitely are. There definitely, 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 definitely are corrupt politicians. And I think it does depend on the country and, you know, in the, in the kind of jurisdictional environment that, you know, kind of finds itself when it comes to, you know, the checks and balances on politicians. But, um, God, what, God, I'm just going off on a little bit of a, I feel like I'm going off on a bit of a tangent. But the other situation, fuck it, we'll just go to the other situation. The other situation is the interview situation. So if you were interviewing someone and they interview really well, like they, they do, they really blow you away in the interview. Like, you, you know, they're so confident, you know, they seem to answer every question correctly, but then let you look at their resume and, you know, they haven't got the experience that you really, that is needed for the role. You know, there's all sorts of little, you know, they've got all these a spotty work history, there's, you know, all sorts of just little, like, red flags popping up, the difficulty you'll have is you'll, you'll be, like, you know, fairly likely to hire that person because they've actually made a really good first impression on you, so it's kind of clouded your judgment when you look at the more hard and, um, harder facts, like, you know, for three years they didn't work, and it's just like, what's going on there? It's like, 
and you know they don't actually have the kind of right experience and the right industries for the you know the job for the for the role they would be taking on if they were successful in the application process so it's just like those things don't align but you'd be like more likely to actually hire them and you might not even like you might not hire someone who is like very well qualified but doesn't do as good a job in the interview and doesn't leave a you know as good first impression and instead you might you you might be you know tempted to go with the person who interviewed well so i guess that's something to look for and also <coughs> oh god the also the thing is like although although this can work in the positive you can kind of have that uh it can go in the uh, other way as well. Halo kind of makes it sound like an angel, which, you know, I don't know what you mean, because that's usually where it kind of comes from is the, is the positive aspect. But the, the negative also is there too. So if someone leaves a negative impression, there will be a negative halo effect where you will then associate negative things with them. And let's say, like, you know, uh, you know let's take the, pol uh, the political example like before. If you don't like that politician and they've lived a bad per, per, um, you know, impression in your mind, if, let's say, something comes out and it's not even as bad as what the um, corrupt good, Im good impression politician um, you know, it, um, scandals were, like, let's say the, the, the negative halo effect politician scandal is much, much more tamer and is really not even that you know, bad. It's like, it's, it's maybe like, Oh, I don't know. What's something like? Maybe he took a donation from a like you know certain industry that maybe he's meant to be regulating. Maybe it was still all declared and everything was all fine, like it was all legal. But you know, it just doesn't look that good. Like it's you know it's bad optics. They say in in, in the in the political and PR world, it's it's bad optics. Um, whereas you could have had a blatant corruption corruption with the other guy, but because he left a good first impression, you kind of feel like you look things in a you look at things in a positive light or you know the best possible light meanwhile with the other guy because you he left an initial bad first impression even small minor things you'll you know, in your mind blow out of proportion and think that they're much worse than they really are and i think that's something we need to really like you also need to check because maybe that person is actually although yeah they took that donation and should they have probably done that yeah probably not it looked a, it, you know it's a bad look but you know it was legal um, and like, let's just be real. Like maybe they actually are when it comes to the, you know, the bills and the laws that that politician, um, supports, maybe they're actually a really good, you know, community driven person. It's like, yeah, they made a bit of a, you know, mess up there and, you know, maybe they should, you know, reevaluate that in future. But, you know, for the most part, let's just say they're actually a really good politician and is actually really community based and is looking out for the needs of the community at whole, not just, you know, for themselves and, you know, for their, you know, close friends and, or, or mates and stuff like that. You know, I, I think this halo effect can taint both ways in the positive and in the negative. And it's about trying to be aware of that and trying to catch yourself when you might make a decision or a judgment on something that you normally wouldn't have if that, if that first impression wasn't made the way it was. So I, th I think that's something to really think about and, you know, maybe look at times in your own life where, you know, your first impression has tainted your judgments about someone, even when, you know, more and more evidence has mounted up in, in the opposite direction, you've still kind of looked at things and thought they're a good person and give them the benefit of the doubt because of whatever that in, in first impression was. So yeah, that's going to be this week's video. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head what the next one's going to be. It was whatever the other one, like, you know, I told you to comment which one I, you wanted to see. So whatever one, whatever the other option was, that will be next week's video. Unless I just decide to change it on the fly because sometimes I do that just to keep you on your toes. But yeah, you know, I hope you have a great week and, you know, I hope, I hope you've had a great week and I hope you have a great week coming forward in the future. And, you know, you know, keep doing your best. I, I'm... I'm trying. I know there's a lot going on for me at the moment on multiple different fronts. It's all go, go, go. And sometimes, you know, it, you don't get it all done in a day, but you, know, you can't. You can get it all done in time. You know, you, you don't have to get it all done in a day. You can get it all done in time. And, you know, it's about getting to that finish line and climbing up that hill. And, you know, you can do that. You can do that. So, you know, have a great week and all the best. See ya. Bye.